Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Hope you guys are doing good today. So there is a lot going on on social media. Currently, Cardi B is trending, DJ Academics is trending, and of course, Diddy is trending, like always. So what's going down is this. We're going to start with the whole Diddy, Christian Combs situation. So if you guys don't know, Diddy's son, Christian Combs, dropped a diss track aimed at 50 Cent this past weekend. So it had the internet going nuts. Basically, Christian raps this. He says, when all they had was 50 Cent, who put the city on the map, stop lying. Pop's been hated by many men, and that's fine. They gonna try and stop these M's, and they gonna die trying. Basically, that's a shot at 50 Cent's song, Many Men. Y'all heard me rapping that a while back. And his album, Get Rich or Die Trying. So this song, pick a side, I'm sorry, I choose violence. Choose violence. This side is trash, okay? Um, I just, it's just not a good song. He can't flow. His cadence is trash. Um, I just don't like it. I don't think he's a good rapper. Don't bust no U-turns cause we ain't forgetting shit. And to all y'all that switch, suck my dick! Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Suck my dick. Um, the song that he did with Kodak Black, that was a really cool song, but it was really only cool because Kodak was on the track. But this pick a side song, I didn't see anybody really giving this song props on social media. So of course 50 Cent has something to say. Now let's keep it real. 50 Cent don't give a damn about his baby mama. 50 Cent don't give a damn about his oldest son, okay? He will troll the hell out of Marquise. He trolls the hell out of Daphne Joyce. So I don't know what the hell Christian Combs was thinking, but this is what Mr. 50 Cent had to say about him. So 50 Cent says, I feel so threatened by things Christian is saying on record. I'm afraid for my life. Please don't hurt me, guys. I never mentioned or posted anything about Puffy's kids because Keefe D said he killed Tupac, LOL. <laughs> then he goes on to say, now, why you have to say some shit like this when you know the feds are investigating? Is you stupid? Is you dumb? LOL. Like when them Fetty boys ran in both our cribs. Too bad they ain't know we bought the one next door because that's the one they miss. Then he says, damn, at King Combs, that's what you told Grace or Mariah on that boat, huh? Gave her the puffy juice with that special sauce in it. LOL. Boy, oh boy, bad boy for life. My dick! Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Suck my dick. What? What? So their beef was going back and forth and somehow Meek Mill jumped in it because you know Meek Mill has to protect Diddy. <laughs> I need love. So Meek Mill says, y'all niggas 50 online beefing with kids. Of course y'all niggas left all y'all's friends and family behind. Y'all holding the culture back from old hating manipulating ass niggas. Then he goes on to say, I've never seen black people laugh at black people getting indicted. He really be online enhancing people's cases. And he got real statements against niggas. You ain't feed Mike not yet. Everybody on to you. Then he says, well, let me stop these niggas. Y'all look up to these people that destroy black families and success like bad cops. I don't find them funny. I see him as a rich parasite. Niggas be rooting for niggas to go to jail and claiming he from the streets. I'ma start bombing on y'all. So Meek went on his sassy rant for at least a good hour. He posted a lot of tweets at 50. I don't care to read them all. 50 Cent eventually replied back and he posted this video. And he says, I commend you for being a strong supportive woman for your man, Meek. Stand by his side and together you guys will have a good life. God bless. <laughs> 50 Cent is a master troll, um, just a straight up mess. So they went back and forth and then Meek was also into a Soldier Boy. And so um, Soldier Boy, if you guys don't know, he was beefing with, he was beefing with Metro Boomin this weekend Then 21 Savage jumped into it and they were going back and forth. So Meek Mill says, Soldier, if you're gonna smoke somebody and they see you and actually smoke you, it's self-defense. Y'all are losing touch of reality. So Soulja Boy replies back to him and says, didn't Diddy fuck you in the ass? <laughs> <laughs> what is 
going on right now? On like 2024 has been insane. None of this stuff was on my bingo card, okay? You got Soldier Boy into it, Metro Boomin and 21 Savage, Meek Mill jumping in, Meek Mill jumping into the 50 Cent with Christian Combs. I mean, you can't make this mess up. And what's funny is that Soulja Boy saying that Diddy fuck you know, Meek Mill in the ass. Now, I remember when Soulja Boy was on that live stream with Nicki Minaj, and they was talking about, you know, DL men in the industry. And a lot of people were saying that Nicki and Soulja Boy were hinting that it was Meek Mill. Let me go ahead and refresh Shaw's memory. Do you think it's a lot of undercover brothers in the industry? <laughs> Uh, oh, no, Queen. We don't know nothing about undercovers. <laughs> oh, no. We don't know about that. Okay. Because uh, I do. You said what? Oh, I said I do. <laughs> 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 all right so y'all just saw that clip honey so that's what went on this weekend so now let's fast forward to today so now let's talk about this whole cardi b situation so cardi b has had one album which is the invasion of privacy which i love every song bang from start to finish and so we've been waiting for years for her sophomore album, and she promised that we'd finally get one this year. Well, it looks like her fans have pissed her off because she went off on social media today um, via Twitter, and then she took the Twitter spaces to go off even more. So let me go ahead and read to you guys what Cardi B said on social media. So here goes one of the comments. Cardi B says, no, the problem is that you was even complaining when I was dropping music as well always got some shit to say with your three neck rolls. And then the person says, let's not do this. I have too much respect for you to go there. You don't want to do this with me. I fucking promise you that, get it together. Cardi B says, bitch, I got pictures of you. You really don't want to go there. Fuck you think this shit is. I let you slide a lot, sick of your shit. I don't know who the fuck you think you is. Somebody else writes, she's spiraling. Then Cardi B says, ain't no hormones at all. A bitch ain't pregnant. Y'all just ruined everything for me. Even when I drop music, y'all ruined everything. Worst fan base ever. I remember crying to Ken because I felt like I did something wrong when I dropped enough because y'all was complaining that it wasn't on today's top hits, making me feel like I always dropped the ball just so the song can go to the top 10 without it. Y'all just love to complain. Then somebody else says, it's time for her to pull back from social media. Her engagement with her fans is unappreciated. Transparency backfires because of her fans' weirdo entitlement. Cardi doesn't have to interact with them. Then Cardi says, exactly. And I tell myself this all the time, and I hate that I fall back and start interacting again. And it bites me in the ass. Anyways, no album this year. I don't care. I'm relaxing this year. Dropping these features I already committed to and traveling and enjoying my summer. So when she said that there was no album this year, people were really pissed. They were like, no, no, we've been waiting damn near 10 years. We need an album. And so she eventually took to Twitter spaces. And this is what she had to say on Twitter spaces. I wanted to know if, if the tweets that I'm cursing you out is being deleted is because my team is doing it from another account. You want to know why? Because I don't give a fuck. Like this, this means a lot to me. Like this means a lot to me. And here y'all go. Y'all complain about fucking everything. Y'all the same motherfuckers that, oh, oh, you said this, this and that. I already told you that I got a date set up for my fucking album, didn't I? Y'all want it when y'all fucking want it, and then it's not going to be when y'all fucking want it. The fuck? You the same motherfuckers I told y'all last month, hey, I'm dropping this month. I'm dropping this. I'm dropping that. Talking shit. Y'all never shut the fuck up. Y'all the same ones that even when I drop music, y'all talk shit. Wasn't y'all the same one that was talking shit when I dropped fucking enough? Oh, oh. Oh, oh, uh, oh my gosh. Y'all was talking shit about enough the second day it dropped because y'all felt like it wasn't on fucking playlistings, the playlistings that y'all wanted. But then y'all was happy and all that when y'all saw it, it, it reached top 10. Y'all see that it's real, it's real hard for female rappers to do top 10 right now, right? Y'all see how hard it is, right? But y'all the ones that be complaining about fucking everything. I dropped fucking four songs in a fucking month. What else y'all want? My fucking pussy? Shut the fuck up.
And every single time I fucking post on this fucking app, on this fucking anything, y'all talking shit. Then I, then y'all wonder why I don't fucking, I, I, be, I be going off. Shut up. You tell me which bitch is doing fucking four billion fucking, four songs that got four billions on Spotify. You tell fucking me. You tell me. Go find a bitch right now. Let me celebrate something without y'all fucking complaining. It's a fucking annoying, nagging, nagging, nagging. Shut the fuck up. That's why I be fucking mad because it's like, oh, I'm so happy. I cannot wait to, I can't wait to share this. Here y'all go talking shit. And I don't want to hear, oh, because you're not dropping this, you're not dropping that. I bet when I drop an album, y'all going to complain. If something don't go right, y'all going to complain. If the marketing right ain't right, y'all going to complain. Y'all did the same shit when Enough dropped. Ugh, complain, complain, complain. Then it wasn't no complain when it went top 10, right? It wasn't no fucking complain. See, it's not that easy to go top 10 right now, huh? Always complain about some shit. Shut the fuck up and celebrate something. Every fucking fan base, whatever little fucking milestone they fucking artists go celebrate it, happy, go about their day. Y'all always talking shit. Shut up and let go go lay down. Lay down, bitch. Sick of it. I'm sick of y'all. I'm getting the fuck off until I fucking drop some other shit. I'm not posting shit because I'm sick of y'all motherfuckers. God damn. I can't even celebrate I can't even celebrate shit. I can't even celebrate his shit without y'all bitching and crying about shit. Bitching and crying, bitching and crying. Shut up, shut the fuck up. The summertime's not even here yet. Yeah. All right, so you guys just heard what she had to say on Twitter Spaces. So obviously, you know, I don't know. If she's just saying that she's not gonna drop an album to like piss off, you know, her fans or whatever. Because I know she said she had been working on one. But I think at this point, she needs to drop her sophomore album and stop worrying about the noise, stop worrying about the naysayers. But I think because of all these fandoms, they put a lot of pressure on these female artists that a lot of times the men don't get. And it's almost like, unless you're in like the top five on Billboard, it's like, oh, that song's trash. It didn't make it past the top, whatever. Instead of people just enjoying the music. So I just think it's sad that she's allowing her fans um, you know, to get to her like that and why punish the entire fan base for the actions of a few? Because me personally, I'm ready for an album. I love Invasion of Privacy. I still bang it to this day. I love a lot of her singles. But yeah, I need some new songs, okay? In my arsenal, it's summertime. I'm ready to like, you know what I'm saying, turn up for real. I'm gonna need you to get up in that booth and rip some shit and stop worrying about the fans. Stop worrying about social media, don't worry about the sophomore jinx. Just go and do your thing in the booth, okay? Thanks. So anyways, y'all, last but not least, we have to talk about this situation that's going on with DJ Academics. So if you guys remember a few months ago, um, I believe the girl is Dominican. Um, she came out about DJ Academics assaulting and aring her. And now she has filed a lawsuit with none other than Tyrone Blackburn. And um, it has now made mainstream media. So y'all go ahead and check out this clip really quick. Hip hop personality DJ Academics accused of rape and sexual assault. A woman filed a lawsuit claiming the YouTube commentator drugged and then raped her at his house in New Jersey in 2022. She says two other men also sexually attacked her at the property earlier in the evening. The suit also accuses Academics of defamation, claiming he publicly denied the assault and made demeaning comments about the victim. Academics has not commented on the lawsuit. All right, so you guys just saw that clip, and in the words of Cat Williams, all these big dick deviants will be exposed in 2024. The hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. So what's going down is basically the girl's name is Fazia Ashbe. I don't know. I probably butchered it and I apologize. She dated the internet personality whose real, whose real name is Livingston Allen after meeting him online in 2021. Zaya alleges that on July 16th of 2022, DJ Academics contacted her, invited her to his house in New Jersey, not suspecting any ill intentions, even though they allegedly hadn't seen each other for almost a year. 
When Zaya arrived, however, she was met by two men identified as John Doe 1 and John Doe 2, whom she did not expect to be there. Zaya claims that the two men drugged her drink and plied her with alcohol before assaulting and raping her on Allen's pool deck. Zaya says the drugs impacted her memory and caused her to lose consciousness, according to the suit. She claims that she later woke up around 4 a.m. on July 17, 2022, in the bedroom by Allen, who was pulling her hair and prying her legs open and brutally raping her. She accuses DJ Academics of penetrating her anally and vaginally, says she was begging him to stop and crying for most of this... Uh, and crying for most of this assault, but losing her ability to move physically. The following day, according to the lawsuit, Zaya asked DJ for details about what happened the previous night. He allegedly showed her a trash can that contained two condom wrappers. Suggested to Zaya that after the alleged pool deck attack, the two John Doe's had taken her into another room in the house and continued to rape her brutally. Zaya also claimed that Allen showed her surveillance video of the alleged pool deck attack. According to Zaya, she watched the video and looked like she was just lying there lifeless, which did not sit right with her. According to the text messages, including the lawsuit later on that day, on July 17th, DJ Academics told Zaya to get tested and she said, and he said he would do the same. Zaya said she found the statement odd and the suit argues that the text was proof that Allen, who had not slept with Miss Zaya for over a year, engaged in unprotected sexual intercourse with her that night. So these are the text messages, and the text messages say this. So DJ Academic says, I'm going to go get tested this week. Thank you, shit too, to make sure you're good. She says, yes, I'm going now. I'm hurt really bad. It's unlike me to do this, and I don't even know the other guy's name, so... I was just laying there. Then he texts her back, says, you called. She says, I'm considering going in for a rape testing kit for us to figure this out because it's bits and pieces I remember and I'm still not okay. Then he says, I mean, I'm not sure what you want me to say. That's why I asked you while you were here if everything you did while I was sleeping, you were okay with doing and you said yes, so I don't know. Then she says, I passed out for most of it, but I'd wake up now and then also was in shock. I got most of the information from you before Before then I never met the other guy. So he just took the opportunity, I guess. Then he says, that's why I told you I don't judge. Just trying to make sure you made the right choice to do whatever you wanted to do. She says, always with you, but not this time around. I blacked out. I remember you waking me up during the night. Then he says, they said you were trying to call and bring your friend to join in, LOL. Just the conversation alone is really disturbing. She's clearly saying that she doesn't remember anything. And he's like, oh, well, I'm not judging you. You know, you were with my friend. And she's like, yeah, I've given you permission in the past, but I don't know the other guy. And he's just kind of playing it off and brushing it away. So then the lawsuit further on goes to say this. After contacting her lawyers for advice, Zaya went to the police. The authorities told her to visit a hospital for a rape kit, which she did. The kit reportedly led to the discovery of traces of Allen's semen, she claims. Zaya then spoke with the authorities, spoke with the authorities in person, and photographs were taken of bruises on her arms, back, buttocks, and legs. Zaya sat for a recorded wire call with Allen, during which she claimed Allen graphically recounted and admitted to having sexual intercourse with her, even going so far as to describe her vagina. This led cops to obtain a warrant for the surveillance footage and other evidence. Zia later claimed that Allen disposed of several items, bed sheets, etc., at the dumpster near his office. Presumably, Mr. Allen was attempting to destroy the evidence of Zia's rape. Despite taking her allegations to the police, Zaya chose silence per the lawsuit and decided to not press charges. Her decision to bring the suit comes after allegations were brought to light at the end of 2023, after both she and Alan addressed the incidents on social media. So if you guys remember, she went off on social media a few months ago. I look crazy right now, but I'm not going to stand here and let this man continue to lie about me. That's not what happened, academics. You know that that's not what happened. And for you to pretend that you didn't do anything, 
for you to pretend that you didn't do anything that I just went to your house and I'm just some thought like we didn't know each other for two years you tried to save yourself after your friends assaulted me whether or not you got drunk or not I know that when you woke up you were on top of me too you raped me too and a test a rape kit was done you know what I'm gonna come back with my own story this is what you wanted and you're about to get it I've been quiet for way too long all right so you guys just saw that clip so now a lot of other clips are coming up of DJ academics that are really disturbing to people um he did kind of address this situation today and plus I'm going to play you some of the old clips about him talking about 17 year olds there's also an old tweet that resurfaced um where he's talking about bad baby and he basically says bad baby got mad titties for a 15 year old and he sent that out in 2018 so I'm going to go ahead and play you guys these clips. Go ahead and check this out. And to keep it real, if you think about it in the bigger scheme of things, there's not much difference between a 20 or a 17 or a 21 and a 17. Just kind of mean one's a minor and one's not a minor. But I will say, listen, I adopted this rule, which I think it was fine. I said, listen, man, as long as this chick got a college ID, she's getting fucked. I don't care if she's 17. I don't care if she's 17 and a half. I don't care if she just turned 17. She's going to get this dick. But I'm not, still not going to say much. So for the people who are like, yo, is that going to talk about? I, I, I will address some things. Um, and I'll address the things that really, listen, I guess there's going to be a case. If there's going to be a case, let there be a case. And, and, and to be fair, this is a civil situation. Okay. It's kind of funny. I see all the blogs running this. They're acting as if it's something new. I spoke on this in December. I also spoke on the fact that everything is transparent. I'm not even hiding and ducking from a situation or ducking from the, um, the narrative that happened. I pretty much told everything. And also, I told the truth. Hey, the police came. They looked. We gave them everything. Pretty much everything is documented. Caught on videotape. They got to see it with their own two eyes. Not only did they say, act, you good. And this is not just word of mouth. This is, you're officially cleared. We could not bring any criminal charges. You are not criminally liable. But also anybody else in the situation um, was also cleared. But in governing authorities, Academics is an innocent man who has not ever been charged with anything of the sort that has to do with any deviancy or anything like that. Has never been charged, will never be charged. That's a fact. But this is a civil situation brewing. This is a shakedown. This is a money tree situation. With me addressing this, and I've seen a bunch of people, you know, the timing is very important, chat. The timing for this is all important. And this, that's what I want to speak about. I'm not going to go against what my lawyer said because there's so much information. I, like, I, I've given way more information before when I just sat and just talked about shit. Once now we're officially engaged, now I have to let the lawyers do the talking. I've done enough talking. So please don't take, yo, Akis, I'm not skirting around nothing. I talked already, okay? And to keep it real, they're trying to use me talking already against me to try to get some, you know what the type of time it is. So I can't say much on that angle. Let's just analyze facts. Again, I can't talk about too much just because I've paid lawyers to handle court. And these people who are coming at me are hoping that I f that up by handling it on social media. The police wants nothing to do with this. They're saying there is no crime. The cops have said, peace. There ain't no crime that we could prove. That's what they've said. We're out of this. Do you know who's the lawyer representing Whoever against me, y'all know the lawyer? Who y'all think that lawyer is? Is it possible that that person who really seen the money grab was really the Diddy stuff? And who was the biggest covering the Diddy stuff? That lawyer allegedly reached out to some people of mine saying, if Ack continues to doubt what we are purporting against Diddy. Remember, we could file a lawsuit on him too. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this about everybody in the industry. I'm going to tell you all this right now. 
if act ever goes down, y'all all go down with me. Because I hold no secrets for nobody. All right, so you guys just saw all of those clips. So, again, this entire situation is going to be interesting to see what ends up happening. I know when this first came to light a few months ago, he denied it. And it kind of went away. But now she's filing a lawsuit. And what's also interesting is that last night, his Instagram page disappeared. And a lot of people were wondering, you know, why was his Instagram page gone? Was he hacked? Did Instagram take him down? But I think he knew that this lawsuit was coming and he didn't want to deal with all the comments on Instagram. So he deleted that page. His Twitter page is still up. Um, he's currently, you know, the top three trending topics. People are going in. Asian Doll just said this about uh, 30 minutes ago. She says, lock this funky bitch the fuck up. So a lot of people are dragging him right now and they feel like he's making excuses and trying to use the Tyrone Blackburn angle. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. In the words of Kendrick Lamar, you can't trust O.V. Ho. But if this is true and this really happened to her, this is disgusting and totally uncalled for. And when somebody comes to your home, it is your job to protect that person. Period, point blank, especially when you have something to lose. You know, your homeboys are not DJ academics. They don't have the money, the power, the prestige. Nobody really knows who John Doe 1 and 2 are, but they know you, DJ academics. So if women are coming to your home, you need to make sure that they are protected or you need to tell them to bounce. If they want to hook up with people, they need to bounce and do that at their own leisure, you know, at their own home, at their own hotel. Because now it looks like you're facilitating a bunch of nonsense at your home. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about all of these stories? How do you guys feel about Christian Combs and, you know, 50 Cent going back and forth and Meek Mill jumping into it? How do y'all feel about Cardi B saying that she's not going to drop an album this year? And then last but not least, how do y'all feel about DJ Academics now being sued for rape and defamation. So I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Make sure you guys hit this video with a like. Feel free to share the video and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.